Hi, I'm Patty. I'm Kim Michelle. And I'm Jill. Welcome to our podcast. It's a great day to talk. Because honestly, what day isn't a great day to talk? So join us in our conversation. A great day to talk is brought to you by St. George Design. Offering complete website design, social media management, search engine optimization, Google and Facebook ad management, and many other digital and print marketing services. StGeorgeDesign.com And by Richardson Brothers Custom Homes, third generation builders who have been building custom homes in southern Utah for over 25 years. They will take your dream home from concept to completion. Contact RichardsonBrothers.com Hello, all of our friends out there. Welcome back to our uh, Great Day to Talk podcast. We're so excited to have you here. And we're so excited to introduce you to our guest today, Dr. Joy Welsh, who is here to talk with us about women's health. Dr. Joy Welsh is a uh, GYN who was OBGYN for many, many years and is now just GYN. She's been practicing for 32 years and she's here to answer all the questions <laughs> around <laughs> women's health. So we're so excited to have her here. We're so excited to have you join in the conversation. Anybody that would like to post on our Facebook, please do so, so that we could answer, well, we could ask Dr. Joy, Dr. Welsh, to answer any questions. Oh, I'll be happy to answer. <laughs> yeah, I could do it too because, you know, my WebMD degrees that I print out every six months that hang on my walls at home. Yes. So welcome, Dr. Thank Welsh. You. We're so happy to have Delighted you. Thank to be you here. for being Thank here you. today. You bet. Um, we have a lot of questions around women's health. And as we've talked about having you come and talked about the things that we wanted to talk about, um, we really kind of just broke it down into age groups, age groups, okay. generational parts. All right. Mm -hmm. And so um, if that's okay with you. Sure. Okay. So is there anything you'd like to introduce or to our friends out in the studio? I don't think so. <laughs> it's just, let's go start and let's get started. Let's just get started. Yeah. Okay. See where it takes us. There we go. That sounds fantastic. Okay. All right. So ladies, what is, what is just, well, Patty, Today, you get to be the lead on the uh, question. Okay. Okay. Well, we wanted the, the age groups that we broke it down um, on, or broke it down in, are uh, 30s, women in their 30s, okay. women who are perimenopausal, women who are menopausal, and women who are postmenopausal. And so with the women in the 30s, I thought we could answer some of the questions, what can women in their 30s anticipate? um with women's health okay so 30s kind of depending on where you live you can either be done with your childbearing or just starting your childbearing oh that's right so that kind of we won't go there um but 30s you tend to be pretty good time in your life your periods are pretty regular you usually don't have many health you usually don't have many health problems um you're not having to worry about high blood pressure diabetes so type of things so you're kind of just um a lot of the problems that come in in the 30s are that maybe the periods are starting to get a little bit heavier or lighter. Sometimes they'll get a little irregular. But most time, 30s are a happy time. Your periods are pretty regular. You may have your childbearing done or not at all or just starting or thinking about it. Um, so you're talking about birth control, whether pre, post, whatever, birth control one way or the other. Um, we're not really doing anything other than pap smears regularly at that point and lab work, watching maybe cholesterol and diabetes screens and that type of thing. I knew I liked my 30s the best. Yes. I was done <laughs> I having know. kids. You were done. I just started. That's and true. some of us so, just started in our 30s. Yeah, yeah. and I was mid, midway. midway. Yeah, you were halfway mm -hmm. through. Oh, you, yeah. you started before and a little after because you had yeah. so many kids. Yeah, Michelle has yeah. so many kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> she has a quiver, no. quiver of children. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the thirties are about basically, I mean, I want to say maintenance in a way. Kind of, kind of on cruise control, mm -hmm. kind of in your thirties, um, which is good. I mean, some women will develop, um, their periods will become heavier in their thirties. Um, they may decide that they want to go with, uh, permanent sterilization in their thirties. If the periods become really heavy and they're done with childbearing and they don't want to be on the birth control pill or maybe a depot shot or something like that to control those periods. Then we'll do an ablation, which is a, 
um, ablati- ablation, kind of a fancy word for destroy the lining of the uterus so they don't have periods, but yet they get to keep their uterus and ovaries so they have n- their normal hormone production mm-hmm. from there on out. They so. have so many more options now than oh when my I gosh, was in my yes. 30s. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't even believe, like the whole idea of the ablation piece is... Yeah. Yeah. Really pretty oh, remarkable. It saves a lot of women from hysterectomies. Yeah. Because so, you used to just, heavy periods, take their uterus out. And we just don't do that anymore. Wow. So, well, and because we know, well, I'm guessing, I don't know anything. Dr. Patricia Richardson. Yes. <laughs> you do. Speak it like you know it, girl. <laughs> um, once a person uh, removes their uterus, and of course their ovaries for sure, but that that combines so many um Complications? Complications. Hormones. Well, it's but major surgery. Yeah, 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 major surgery so for sure. So if you sure. don't have to do it, don't do it. And also, isn't there a health risk connected to hysterectomies? No. Is there no. any? The uterus, I meant heart health. Yeah, no. The uterus, all it's good for is having babies, having periods, and having cancer. Well, oh. once you're done with babies, if you, I mean, if you need a reason to come out. So no, it's just muscle, it just, you know, periods. So there's no hormones mm-hmm. from the uterus or anything like that. Right. So, so if you did a hysterectomy, we'd try and keep the ovaries in place so you still have your normal hormone, produ- mm-hmm. hormone production. But still, I because, um, <laughs> you know, you're, um, it's a major procedure. If you're just trying to get rid of those periods, an ablation is such an easy, proce- is Ooh, such an easy procedure. Definitely. So. Wow. Uh-huh. Yeah, there was not even, that word Kay. wasn't even a thing back in the mm-hmm. day. No, mm-hmm. no. I'm, one of my patients, she brought her daughters in for... You know, and she had an ablation. She said, why would any woman even want to have a period if they don't have to? And the younger girls can get on the depo shot or pills and skip the placebos so that they may not have a period until they're ready to have babies. <gasps> there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, really? My there's word. no risks to nope, that. There's nope, no. Nope, nope. All these things just thin the lining of the uterus down so that they don't have a withdrawal bleed. So. And it doesn't affect your ability to have children nope. once you make the decision nope. to have children. Absolutely not. Because all oh you're doing is, is stopping I was born ovulation. In the wrong generation. Yep. We were. Mm-hmm. I'm still sitting here with my jaw hanging down. That just is. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you, oh, I had yeah. to wait till I was in my fifties to go yeah. having that yes. issue. So a lot of things are different now. You know, if you're on the pill or on the depo, you're actually preventing ovulation. So you're you're keeping your ovaries. You're not wasting an egg every month, so oh to speak. My word. So when you do get in your forties and are you know some of these women in their forties and are trying to you know, have babies, IVF right. or whatever, then they will have a few more eggs in Eggs anyway. in there. That's yeah. really oh, interesting. So what about the, for the women who are in that age period who aren't having a smooth, you know, things aren't operating Menstrual cycle. smoothly, mm-hmm. you know, for example, who maybe are trying to get pregnant but are having a difficult time in the process? Those women, you have to you try and figure out why they're not ovulating regularly, right. and then cor- try to if they need help with getting pregnant, then you try to co- correct that ovulation so that they can um, ovulate and conceive. Or you're looking for like endometriosis, those type of things that you can ad- address um, to that would affect their fertility. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And so you would address those issues before you say, okay, let's do fertility. Treatment, yeah, treatment. Right, right. That's part yeah. of the pre- process. Right, the right. process. Figuring out why they're not able to conceive, or and then working that direction. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was really fortunate in that I didn't have issues. So, what are some of those issues that women that are trying to um, become pregnant might run into? Well, um, there's basically you have to have either you have to have adequate sperm. Well, there we go. You have to have eggs. You know, you have to be ovulating every month, and you have your tubes have to be open. That's a very simplified way of doing it. So you have to rule out those those three things. So and um, along the two, it, most of it's because they're not ovulating. That's a lot of the reason. And so you try and figure out why are is their thyroid off? Um, are their hormones off? Do they maybe have polycystic ovary syndrome, which is a hormonal thing that can affect ovulation? Um, so those are the basic the basic things that we're trying to figure out. And just because you don't ovulate every month regularly, some don't, a lot don't. It doesn't mean you can't get pregnant. So there there's multiple factors that work, that work into it. Wow. So. Yeah. And as far as the polycystic PCOS, oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, are, is that more prevalent, or are we just hearing more about it, or is it maybe both? Uh, I think it's. Uh, Probably a combination of that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not an easy thing to diagnose. It's not just one thing. It's not. They don't all have polycystic ovaries. It's a. It's an. It's a. Um, it's. They don't. They don't all not. You know, not all these symptoms are of. of um, you know, they don't have to have all of these to be PCOS. Oh, right. so and what, it has it, to be, what are the symptoms? So it has to be. You're not. 
not ovulating. You may have multiple little cysts in your ovaries. You may not. They tend to be insulin resistant, and that's why you see more central obesity. Mm -hmm. Some will have um, increased hair growth, facial hair, that type of thing. The insulin resistance, so they're incre you know their sugars are up because they have to produce more insulin to handle the sugars that, that they have, and so they with the insulin the increased insulin then they store that sugar into fat. So that's why we right. see the increased uh, weight. So a lot of those women you'll put them on metformin, which will correct the insulin resistance, which will then correct the ovulation problem. So it's kind of a interesting. It's kind of an interesting mm -hmm. um, multiple array of symptoms. We're like a big chemistry experiment. Honestly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. it comes right down to, mm -hmm. and we're probably seeing, you know, we're more obese in our country. So we're seeing right. more younger uh, women are, are more obese. So then you kind of have to figure out, okay, is it really PCOS or is it just, you know, increased weight? And so then we see some other symptoms. So, but you treat them kind of the same, you know, not everybody that has PCOS will have irregular ovulation or, you know, where mm -hmm. they don't ovulate regularly. So, but you can't hurt anybody by putting them on metformin, you know, if they happen to have trouble with insulin resistance and that type of thing. Yeah, and isn't there some new technology, I mean, not technology, but isn't there some new research on metformin that's talking about really some long-term benefits to that medication, or mm -hmm. is it really well, in its infancy in terms uh, of the yeah, research on that yeah, specifically? Yeah, I think we can't go there yet. Mm -hmm. I think it's been around for a long, long time. Yeah. You know, it used to be years ago, we put a woman on metformin, they'd start ovulating and get pregnant right away mm -hmm. if they had that, that insulin that, that resistant. Reason. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's like, well, how does that work? It's like, well, it's the way the insulin affects the ovary function and that type of thing and the, the pituitary and all that. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is. It's all a yeah. balance yep. for sure. Yep. That's really yep. interesting. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing anyone gets pregnant with uh, uh, all it's of the parts and pieces baby. that have to exactly. be exactly. in the right place. <laughs> parts and pieces <laughs> have to be in the right place. So, Patty, are you saying we are all miracles? <laughs> I here? feel like every, yeah. okay, everyone Good. is a miracle. Yes. <laughs> and you're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so speaking of parts and pieces, what about perimenopausal? Let's move on to the 40s. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. What kind well, of, my, my husband sent... Before we move on there, my husband sent this great question, which was, how do men best support women in each of these different, in oh, each of these different good. stages? Scott. 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 I know, he's amazing. Scott. 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 You Scott. are amazing. Husband Scott is amazing. Um, Say yeah. yes to whatever your wife says. <gasps> oh, yes. Okay, so that is an <laughs> Can amazing we give a round answer. Of that is a round yes. of applause. And I didn't even pay her for that's that answer right. before we started. <laughs> I will pay her after, but I didn't even pay her before, so that's great. Just be agreeable and agree with whatever your wife says. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's actually safer. It is. <laughs> the world she may be wrong. Place. She'll realize it later. Later. Perhaps. Pop. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Only yeah. if she really is. <laughs> and maybe admit to it. Thank you, Scott. So <laughs> let's march into kind of perimenopause, menopause together. Mm -hmm. So the average age is, of menopause is around 52. So a lot of women will start in the, peri you know, we're all kind of perimenopausal. It's before menopause, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so uh, 52, a lot of women in their mid-40s, mid to late 40s will start having the kind of um, symptoms of perimenopause, which can be anything from irregular periods, Hot flashes, mood swings, trouble sleeping, vaginal dryness, <laughs> those type of things. Ding, 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 ding. So those the three pregnancy well, tests I made Judd yet. by. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So those yeah. will start in, in mid-40s. Periods can be, you know, lighter, heavier, closer together, further apart, cramping, you know, so all so those things. So just a million Flip differences. Flip of a coin. Flip of a yeah. coin. It can be any of those things. Wow. And it can be, so, you know, some women will have years of these irregularities and periods. Some will have regular periods, stop, never have another one. So they're, we're all different, mm. of course. Okay. So perimenopausal, you can anticipate that in your 40s and, and around 52 is when... Is the average age. There's average. always, you know, average bell curve. There's sure. going to be those afterwards. But, mm -hmm. you, but, you know, you hope to be, you hope to okay. be done before that, of oh course. Oh, my gosh. So. And, and do the night sweats start during peri? Oh, yeah. Okay, that, okay. Okay. No, oh, yeah. just asking for a friend. Oh, yeah. Like, you know. sweats, <laughs> hot All of these questions well, are it, for friends. Like, like our that friend and this friend. Uh -huh. No, nope. right. I'm, yeah. I'm not even perimenopausal. Which is so lucky. Like, well, I guess I am. 
because we're all very you're all but you may be eight. But my estrogen no is still still fine. fine. That's good. So you're I'm still seeing. ovulating regularly. So. I guess so. I <laughs> lucky you, you pregnant. pregnant. Next seeing. week we'll be yeah. taking a test for you. Well, we've been talking about having another baby. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so exciting. Riley, Riley I'm having a shower car. next week for Patty. Yep. Jill, can you come? I can come, but I'm, I'm going to get the paramedics out there for Riley. Who probably oh, my just, gosh. Yeah, I'll just probably die from a heart attack. Well, you know, <gasps> when I was a young mom in my 20s, uh, we didn't have Instagram. I didn't get to do a gender reveal. I feel Aww, like I missed out on all on those all things. That. And, Cheated. and so I want to do that all I'm, over. I'm I love it. Because I love it. Come We're back doing it. In two months that are actually legitimately having a party for Patty and her brain. Hey, it's a girl. <laughs> I'm going to say it was your fault. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I did put this out in the universe. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> and actually, no, thank you. I'm going to keep let my kids keep having babies. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We oh, used to call okay. these the flat hoshes when my mom started perimenopause. Called them the flat hoshes. And we used to make fun. I, okay, we, as in I, used to make fun of her and her friends. And um, my mom gave me that Because you were the just how you old then? I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. I was in my 20s. Well, that's so old enough to know better, Jill. Oh, well, well, you're to be still very self, self so centered. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that ha -ha, won't happen to me. You. Yeah, ha ha, mm -hmm. it's you and yeah. not me kind yeah. of thing. Well, it's 116 right. outside right now. So what everybody's my car so said. Everyone's everyone's having everyone having Everyone is in the middle <laughs> of a hot flash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Patty, yeah. what else do you want to know about perimenopause before yours begins? Um, with perimenopause, uh, is there anything to do to overcome some of the symptoms? Sure. And I what mean, are those symptoms? You bet. Primary symptoms. Pri or the hot flashes, uh -huh. right. swings, and trouble the, sleeping, those type of things. And your periods can be wacko. Right. Is there, are there be. other um, brain Fog, fog, brain fog, um, heart. Some women will notice that. And is that because they don't sleep well and so they're not mm -hmm. thinking as well? That's a lot of it. The hormones mm -hmm. are kind of be doing that. That affects us as well, too. So the things that you can, I mean, if your periods are the main problem, they're really whacking you out. Birth control pills, the depot shot, any of those are fine during the perimenopause for the majority of us. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that also evens your hormones out so that you're not doing this. So a lot of women will, if they've had no trouble with, pills through the years or even if they've never taken them it's a it's a good time to maybe go on the pill and kind of ease through the change oh and if they don't want to do something like that then i usually will recommend natural progesterone mm -hmm. um, whether a cream form or pill take that at night because it stops the hot hot sweats or the hot flashes at night the night sweats it helps your sleep pattern it supports your sleep pattern it's also going to help even out those moods and it It'll it have protects a, your uterus too, doesn't it? It doesn't yeah, it yeah, help. Yeah, it thins the lining of mm -hmm. the uterus, so it's it's going to help decrease the, the the periods. It doesn't regulate you per se, but mm -hmm. so that's a natural way to kind of get into it if you mm -hmm. need some help. In the and if you're having house. mood swings, can you give the cream to your husband so that he yeah. can withstand? <laughs> there you go. Or yeah. your partner right. so that exactly. they can withstand yeah. your yeah. mood swings. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. I think you know. should put Scott on progesterone. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Scott is in perimenopause. <laughs> yes, he's in my perimenopause. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Years right. ago, of course. Men, right. men, a pause, yeah. Yeah, yeah a a pause. Oh, pause for men. nice. Yeah. A pause mm -hmm. for men. Good one. There you go. Well, you know what? That's really another safe rule of thumb if men just paused before they <gasps> oh. commented commi commented on a woman's perimenopause right, right. menopause or menopause that would they just they might live right. longer they would they live longer uh -huh. yes. yeah. just trade mm -hmm. out the sex organ organs for a month uh, what do you do with that what am i supposed to do let with that? them switch. you get rid of them <laughs> let them switch and have them for a month uh -huh. let them have the hormones for a month i have to buy pants that are weirder <laughs> i don't even know. what do i do like you wear them backwards tuck it up tuck it down side right i yeah. don't know no you don't want that taco no. uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> you make some videos of how to how to wear them uh -huh. yeah right you go yeah. on youtube it would be awesome uh, yes i will <laughs> lose my job uh, well okay. welcome welcome <laughs> okay. to so, a great day to talk <laughs> Menopause. Okay. Okay, okay. Menopause. Okay. This is mine. Okay. <laughs> Asking for a friend. Okay. Okay. So, um, of course, this first question from a, a friend of mine. Okay. All right. It's, is menopause real? Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that because there are a lot of people in the general public that think that it is a um, kind of a hysterical disease or not oh. even a disease. It's like fake. No. That it's just a no, woman's it's your excuse. hormones dropping. I mean, it's your hormones going from up here, dropping down to 
you know, really, really low. And when our estrogen drops like that, that's where all these symptoms come from okay. is the estrogen dropping. Well, you know, in a lot of books that I've read, especially, you know, the historical, f historic Mary Lincoln. That I like, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And they were mm -hmm. put into a sign, a oh, sign, a sane, sane asylums, sane asylums because mm -hmm. of this. I and had so an aunt that was really oh my gosh. when she went through the change, they put yeah. her up in the state hospital. Yeah. Oh my word. Okay. Well, I'd take club med. <laughs> yeah. Over a state sandals. hospital? Over sandals. the state, yeah, yeah. sandals. A sandals yeah. resort. This is what you do. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not a bad idea. Anyway, really? You know? mm -hmm. I, well, okay, so we can check that off. Sure. Uh, our friends out there, it is legit. Yeah. Menopause is a legit thing. And, okay, so you said the hormones are estrogen dives. Uh, yeah, estrogen, because you're not ovulating, so your estrogen drops. You're not ovulating, so your progesterone drops. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so those are the two things that really affect. And when they're mm -hmm. not in balance, then we see all right. of these crazy Everything. roller coaster rides. Right. Okay, so um, are the what are the varying degrees? Are there... It's not a cookie cutter no. um, situation, no. right? No. Women experience it in different varying sure. degrees. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the most extreme and some of the most? Some women have no symptoms at all. I mean, they oh may not have word. any hot flashes, any mood swings. Mm -hmm. They just cruise from one time in their life to the next. Wow. Yeah. And they're, you know, lucky, I think. But, yeah. you know, some women are sure. really pretty unaffected by it. And then others are very extremely affected by any change in their hormones. So okay. some women have to be on or require um, uh, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications through that. You know, some do. I mean, it's just they may have an underlying problem that is then amplified by right. the hormones driving so, or diving. So, you know, everybody's individual in that respect. So you kind of have to look at the individual and treat them. Okay. Not everybody wants to be on hormones, and that's okay, too. I mean, they don't need to be necessarily. It really is an individual choice. And in women, or maybe they can't be on hormones because they have breast cancer or something like mm -hmm. that. Then we, uh, several of the antidepressants are indicated for they help with hot flashes and mood swings and that type ah. of thing. So there's options out there. Okay, okay, that's really interesting too, mm -hmm. because then, like you said, breast cancer affects how things can be treated. Are there other diseases that affect how um, menopause can be treated? Um, Breast cancer is probably the biggest one. Uh -huh. If you have a has history of blood clots, so like blood clots in your legs or a stroke or anything like that, then you should not be on hormones as well. Okay. You should not be on hormones. Okay. So interesting. Okay. So are there other hormones besides estrogen and progesterone that are affected? Those are the two biggies. Testosterone. Women's testosterone is so low anyway. I mean, our normal range is like zero to four or something like that, depending on the lab. But testosterone also will drop a little bit. You'll see a dive in libido with... Um, Low um, testosterone. Uh, yeah, well, with menopause. And is that because of the, uh, you know, estrogen and progesterone dropping? Is it because of the testosterone dropping? It's a multifactorial. Libido is a multifactorial thing. Mm -hmm. It's not just one thing. So you have to kind of look at all those things and kind of um, kind of try different things depending on the individual. Some women do well with some testosterone. Some don't. You know, sometimes it's a, I've kind of found through the years it's kind of a flip of a coin. Right. Flip of a coin, where it's gonna, whether it's going to help the individual. It kind of depends. It's We're all individuals, so it really. So really, like we're, we're kind of a book. charcuterie board, yes, and we have to figure out kind of which. Pick it out. Mm -hmm. Pick out which is going to be the thing and exactly. what's missing in. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. I love that you said charcuterie board. I know. Board. Thank you. It's one of my favorite meals. <laughs> I know. I love it. <laughs> it's really one of my favorite words. Yeah. It is lovely, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? It's a uh -huh. lovely word, and mm -hmm. it's a lovely meal. You could yeah. say it. You mm -hmm. could say it. Go ahead. Charcuterie. charcuterie. <laughs> Fantastic. Mm -hmm. See, thank you very much, all of us as <laughs> language people. Okay. How long does it last, asking for a friend? <laughs> Average length of symptoms is five years. Oh, my God. But some women will have hot flashes till the day they exit. So really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about that. Menopause is five years or perimenopause? Perimenopause is menopause. just up until you hit the menopause. And then you have to be without a period for a full year to be in menopause, postmenopause. So oh. postmenopause is after that year. A full year. Mm -hmm. A full year so without if you're a on period. Like period. If you're like a week from your full year and you have a period, you... You're Puzzle not there. You have you're to start there. over. You get to start mm -hmm. No, over no, again. that's the thing. Don't, don't, it, that's like legit. That is, a, a, for a friend, yeah. that is a thing. But yeah. so like a solid year. Of no period. Of no period. And then you're post-menopause? Yeah. 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 In the menopause. Are you there, period. Jill? Are you, are we having a party? We're having like a big party. Yeah. We're having a baby shower for uh -huh. Patty yep. and we're yep. having a menopausal we're having party for Jill. We're a menopausal party for Oh my Jill. gosh. This is good. And charcuterie boards charcuterie for everybody. Board for everybody. Mm -hmm. Individual. Yeah. Because individual we're all individual. Ones. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So here's another one. Um, blood work can be done to identify affected hormones. Right. 
And then how, so then it's just, again, like you yeah, said, it's then individual. What? So you would then look at right. what's missing. Right. What's you, you look and see how low levels are. And some women choose to go on hormone replacement. And if they do, then you kind of use those levels to kind of start them on a base, you know, on a, a, a whatever it is. Or a a treatment. Yeah. And then kind of go with their symptoms. And if they need a little bit more of, you know, estrogen or a little bit more progesterone, then you just adjust it depending on their symptoms, not necessarily the lab. You know, you don't need to go in and if you're on hormone replacement, you don't need to go in every six months and get a lab work to see what your level is because if you're feeling okay, are you treating the lab or are you treating the patient? Oh, so, mm, I so like there's that. Some, there's some I different, like that different schools that of thought on that. Yeah, are and Dr. Treating? Joy, do you think that um, most doctors across the board in this day and age um, – consider this a real medical treat it as a serious a problem yes yes, yes. Uh-huh. yeah but not everybody it kind of depends you know probably 15 20 years ago they had the study that came out women's health organization that looked at hormone replacement and the risks and we mm-hmm. you know everybody was was that it was, was on, were on hormones all of a sudden we, we yanked them off of it because of these risks well right. if you dive into the risks in the study and look at it, the increased risk of breast cancer with hormone replacement, which was permarin synthetic and permarin and synthetic progestin, not estradiol and natural progesterone, so synthetics. There was an increase of eight women per 10,000 women per year, a little bitty amount of breast cancer. There was an increased risk of or incidence of 10 women per 10,000 women per year of stroke and heart problems. So, okay. so the risks that, 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 we they that we worried about Mm -hmm. when you dived into the study it was very very minimal you know when one in eight women already get breast cancer eight in ten thousand is a very minimal amount so you can't say oh you go on uh, hormone replacement you're going to increase your risk of breast cancer you don't of course now if all the women in your family have breast cancer then maybe you ought to rethink you know or talk to your physician about the hormone aspect but but in a general nature or a general fact you you know you, you should feel very comfortable taking hormone replacement to, you know, I tend to go towards estradiol and natural progesterone through the years just because that's what our body was producing on its own. So why not mm-hmm. give you back mm-hmm. what you're already producing? Yeah. So it's good for your bones. It's good for your vagina. It's good for your bladder. It's good for your... We used to say it cuts your heart disease, heart disease, your heart risk disease in half. It doesn't really. There still are benefits, but not nearly what we thought years ago. Mm-hmm. So there's still good things, though. The, the downside is it uh, estrogen, like in birth control pills, et cetera, does increase our risk of, of blood clots. It in, just like pregnancy. Pregnancy way increases your sure. risk of blood clots. So this is still just a minimal amount compared to pregnancy. But So you do have a little bit of risk of blood clots. So if somebody has a history of, they shouldn't be on hormones. Or, you know, if you're going on long trips, you know, we all probably ought to take a baby, baby aspirin, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. So, so you got to look at the individual, in, you know, person, women, but in the bigger scheme of things, you know, hormone replacement it, it, it is a good thing. So not for everybody, but it, it can be a very good thing. Yeah. I love that. I've Great. learned so much about stuff for my friend. I'm glad your friend's happy. About Thank that. you. <laughs> One last question that I'm asking for a friend. So um, is there um, leniency if a friend in menopause kills someone? No. <laughs> <laughs> the husband? So, I don't know. It could, it could vary between, you know, teenagers. Uh, is that considered like insanity? a justifiable, <laughs> no. in, in the law, in, in the law, is that considered a no. justifiable? Right. Okay, Have so. you ever a serious mental right. illness <laughs> disclaimer oh, there? hysteria? <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, Have any you seen the Gallagher, yeah. huh? Gallagher episode from With 100? the one that has the... I had a crazy day! And has kills. all the kids? No, oh. it just talks okay, about no. a woman... Had a crazy day and killed someone, and it was Gallagher is <laughs> enacting it, and it's very offensive and bad. Thing. <laughs> not go look for that one. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I can't say as I have, Patty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll watch it at your it's party. It's been years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe the baby shower. <laughs> so, oh, thank you, real Joy. quick, you mentioned um, bone health. Yes. What What are some things that w- you would recommend for aging women to maintain great bone um, health? Make sure you're getting it at least 1,200 milligrams of calcium a day in your diet. If you don't get it in your diet, then supplement up to 1,200 milligrams. And vitamin D, make sure your vitamin D is where it should Mm -hmm. be. Exercise, weight-bearing exercise. Walking is perfect, you know, so Mm -hmm. those are the biggies. So maintain muscle strength Mm -hmm. to support your bones Mm -hmm. and then take calcium calcium and and vitamin D. D. Mm -hmm. And try not to do... 
you know, um, things that increase your risk of osteopenia, osteoporosis, you know, um, caffeine, caffeinated mm-hmm. products is a biggie. Oh, oh caffeine. so it's a good thing that my caffeinated esophagus like, got messed mm, up, and I can't have yeah, ca- so can't have can't had that, caffeine yeah. for seven yeah. years Cat now. Factors into it. Ca- Long term steroid use or ca- carbonated. I'm sorry, they say ca- carbonated. Carbonated. Yeah, yeah. carbonated, carbonated, carbonated. Oh, yeah. Wait, carbonated? Yeah, not mm-hmm. caffeine. Not so caffeine per se, but caff. Carbonated, carbonated. Yeah. soda, yeah. soda. Sodas, yeah. Wait, long term steroid use and club cycle. Club cycle. I don't know about that one. I'll check on that. Okay, okay, okay. Clarify. And then um, thyroid, long-term thyroid um, supplement. You know, if you have to take thyroid, you have to take thyroid. But that also has a little bit increased risk of bone loss. loss. So just keep, you know, do all the other things. And being white and being, you know, female. Not white, being female um, tends to be an increased risk for um, osteoporosis. osteoporosis. Okay, is it a good idea to get a baseline on your bone density as you're entering menopause? Uh, We, 57, you know, 60, not anything earlier than that. Unless you have a family history, and then you want to keep keep an eye on it. Okay, Mm -hmm. I'm writing that down too. So um, I'm going to ask some questions about postmenopausal. And as you can tell, the designations of who was taking what section has nothing to do with the actual ages (laughs) of the women who are present. Okay. So, um, we just drew straws. Yeah, we just drew straws. <laughs> and as it happens, I got postmenopausal. Okay. So, um, the postmenopausal, what do you think are the greatest awareness for, for women who are in this section? They've gone through sure. menopause now. Sure. What are the greatest awarenesses for them to have in this Probably period? The greatest right. issues they may be facing? in their marriage perhaps with their partner Mm -hmm. as well as for them personally Mm -hmm. um, in this stage of their life probably one of the biggest complaints i have is that i see is vaginal dryness at that point if they've not been on any hormone replacement that's you know it increases and you don't need to do systemic hormone replacement we can do vaginal estrogen um, in a cream or a pill so that will improve that quite a bit it also affects their bladder function so a lot of women will have the leakage of urine and, and that type of thing so vaginal estrogen or a urinary tract infection, so vaginal estrogen will help prevent all those things. So, so that's a big complaint. If it hurts to have sex, you're not going to want to have sex. A lot, so a lot of women postmenopausal have no interest in that. And is it because they're uncomfortable, or you know, various things go into right. that, obviously. But the vaginal health is pretty important at that point because you know, in your 60s, it's just going to get worse. It's not going to get any better. So, it's nice to kind of get on top of that and and help with that. So that, you know, maybe 10 or 15 years down the line, things are really not, you may not be having sex at that point, but, you, you know, you're concerned about your bladder health, you know, with your bladder function and bladder infections and that type of thing. So if I heard you correctly, at this point in my life at 60, I'm totally going to get better, but uh, more awesome. Yep. But my vaginal health may not it's gonna if just, I don't if take don't proactive steps uh-huh. around it. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Maybe. Uh, possibly. Most of us. Most yeah. of us. So what about sex drive itself? That takes a drive or, or it takes a tank, mm-hmm. you know, just because of the hormones dropping. Right. So not everybody, but the more majority of us. And is it because of a lot of things? You know, is it, there's so many things that go into it. It's not just hormonal. So Sure. So, but, um, you know, sex drive can, can be improved by, it can violate some estrogen in some women, testosterone in some women, some women, you know. Some just guy on the corner you go find some guy like sandals when we go to sandals. There you oh <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. the resort. Well, I mean, I don't. I, I have the hottest husband. Yeah, so that's period. Good. But right. I still don't. Just being right. completely so it's hormones, vulnerable it's hormones and honest. The big thing. It's the hormones is the biggest thing. Probably, mm-hmm. but I had a uh, bilateral mastectomy at fifty. So you shouldn't be on any hormones, right? Perhaps. Right. Yeah. But no sex drive from that. Mm really that moment right on a very patient and loving husband but sure so i don't i don't see hormones as a a fix for that right 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 Mm -hmm. so there's the you know multifactorial you know there's body image there's where i am in my life you know a lot of different uh, things factor into that so Mm -hmm. there may not be a a a, a one fix thing for everybody Mm -hmm. there isn't obviously so yeah another charcuterie board yeah 
Yes, a lovely yes. shark. Another charcuterie yes. board. Okay, Sh- Scott, I'll bring you home a lovely charcuterie <laughs> board. <laughs> you have to add sixes. Yeah. <laughs> Just going to have to pick and choose and figure out which ingredient on the charcuterie board. He, he'll be thrilled with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what about um, brain fog and, oh, we didn't you know, ask about that those of kinds them. of um, issues? Is that related to... Is that just related to aging in general? Like, I know the word is up there somewhere, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm just having a hard time finding it, mm-hmm. fishing it out of the word yep. pond, yep. or is that related to post-menopause? Probably a combination of both. Okay. You know, some women don't seem to see that, and, and it's probably what? just a normal <laughs> part of normal uh, part of aging. But uh, uh, the aging aspect, you know, mm-hmm. you know, and we get so much in our brain, okay? Yeah, things start to forget, and the mm-hmm. important things you may not need to really necessarily remember. Uh, they're probably not, you know, it's harder for us to grasp them, that sure, kind of thing or come up with them, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. So. so, but some women really do have a real um, brain fog, or and then you kind of supplement back with their hormones, and they're like, okay, I feel back to normal. So. I did read an article that just, um, I just read it in the Wall Street Journal. I don't know if it is that recent, but it was referring to a study that said that the concerns about uh, how menopause affects the brain, it looks like that actually your brain will recover from that generally post-menopausal mm-hmm. unless maybe there's an Alzheimer's factor in play. Right. But right. post-menopausal, it looks like your brain will learn to compensate for that once you get Kind of through that. Yeah. You do have, you, yeah. you do see that. In, yeah. In, yeah, where it kind of comes right back to normal in yeah. some. So, so not everybody, but not everybody's the same. Sure. So, right. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. my question so. then. How do you tell the difference? Is this age or is this yeah. menopause? Yeah, when, because I've read that if you can recognize that you're forgetting things, then it's not Alzheimer's. Is that true oh, or I just something that I really like grasped onto because it made me feel I better? Don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know. I'm not a neurologist. I'll beg ignorance on that one. Oh, you know what? Sorry. I, this is what I would say, Jill. <laughs> if that makes you feel better, then believe that to be true. That's right. That's what I've done for about 10 then, years. Then I would say but believe then, that to be true. That's right. But then my mom was diagnosed and I was like, oh, well, did she think she, she was she Okay, but things? if, if, even if that were not true, how would it serve you to not believe that? I mean, well, you know me very well, Kim Michelle. I know. <laughs> so There's I would say. to worry about. She's going to want to do that. <laughs> it's just in my nature. <laughs> And especially yeah. when so I'm that's well, correct, Jill. In. That is true. If you can <laughs> recognize that you're having a rational thought about it, then it's not all Alzheimer's. Okay, as soon as you yeah. print out your WebMD degree and hang it on your wall, then I'm going to believe. <laughs> well, you. I'm going in right now. There you go. It's done. That, that's a done that deal. memory, that memory loss is tricky. And mm-hmm. I, if I don't write it down. If I don't have it in my calendar, I look at my calendar every day just to see what am I doing today? Where am but I supposed you're, to be? You're, you've relied on that for years, though. That that's the other thing so too. Is that's something you just do. You don't have mm-hmm. to remember it because you wrote it down. Well, and that's why we aren't, you know, good spellers anymore. Or why we don't like remember math. telephone numbers? I don't know how to do math. Mm-hmm. I can't look mm-hmm. at an address and find it. Right. You know. Right. And the kids are like, "Okay, Magellan, <laughs> can I? Can you just?" <laughs> Why are you giving me an, you're going to turn west? What? Uh, (laughs) So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I I remember living in L.A. and I had a huge Thomas guy. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the big Thomas guy? Yeah. Yeah. That was in Mm -hmm. in New York where they don't go by parallel streets. Right. And it's spoke of a tire Mm -hmm. inside a spoke of a tire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's, you just had to figure Mm -hmm. that out. Get to La Brea and then you're going to turn left on whatever. Yeah, we don't force ourselves to do Mm -hmm. that anymore. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. And I I do think you're right about that because we aren't using our brain to figure (laughs) things out. Um, We're we're losing some of that. Oh, we're using it for different things. Maybe so. Maybe so. We find different pathways, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I don't think we should use the old standard to necessarily dictate where we are today because we do use different pathways. We use our brains in a different way than maybe we Mm -hmm. used them before. So Mm -hmm. maybe I don't remember a phone number that I used to remember because I don't have to remember it anymore because it's in my phone. Oh, yeah. But that doesn't Mm -hmm. mean that I'm not using my brain in In a different way. way. Like one great way to use your brain is to always be on this podcast. 
Well, I agree. (laughs) To continue to continue to have conversations around Mm -hmm. civil discourse and dialogue. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Civil discourse and dialogue. I love that you said that, Jill. Yeah. Um, I am so grateful yes. to have you here today. Yes, and thank, thank you, so Dr. Much. Thank, thank you so much. much. I feel hope I help. So, oh my Absolutely. goodness. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Pages of notes here, hope and I'm so grateful. Yeah. <laughs> so now, Jill, you can go back to your friend okay. if I your friend didn't watch, friend. and then you can give her this information. I know. I'm gonna. I'm going to copy these sheets and. Turn them over to my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and probably my friend's husband, too. Yeah, there you well, go. <laughs> I, I definitely need, if I don't, I'm not getting 1,200 milligrams of calcium. I don't think I am. Um, your diet? <gasps> I no. did have my blood work done recently, and I was low in B12 and low in vitamin D. Mm. So you got us are. Yeah. Most so are. I am taking, I take B12 mm. shots that I can give myself, mm. and I'm doing some sublingual D, but I probably really need to and see what my calcium intake is. And for some of us, biotin is also a good thing. Yes. Sure. Oh, can't hurt anything. <laughs> for yeah. hair, no, for it hair can't growth, hurt. It hair, can't skin, hurt. and nails. Biotin for hair, sure, skin, and nails. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, hair thinning is not a thing. No, oh, my gosh. In menopause. No, no. Don't even get excited because it's not a thing. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, I can just do this, and I've got a handful of hair. Yeah. Well, okay. That's a whole other subject. But right. thank you again. You're welcome. Dr. Welsh, this yes. is fantastic. Thank you so nice much. Appreciate yeah. you and well, all your yeah. time. We know you're a busy, busy person. No, so no. thank you. And ladies, I what do we have for next week? It's our book. It is not our book. It is not our book. Oh my gosh, I did um, this twice But we are going to mention our book <laughs> oh, uh, because our book twice. is going to be in two weeks. And if you are in the process of reading the book, we hope you're enjoying it and continue to be reading it. We have two weeks to finish it. We'll probably mention it again next week. Uh, so next week, look to our look for little hints about what we'll be talking about next week as we do our posts on Facebook. Go on there, look at them. Um, comment on them. We'd love to hear what your feedback is. Uh, li- any nudges for this week? Like and share. And also, um, check your health. Yeah, check your health. And check your health of the people around you. And also, thank you for the gentleman that got on this uh, tonight. If you have a woman in your life that you love, then, uh, well, we know that that's why you're on this call tonight, uh, on this podcast tonight. So we acknowledge you for being part of this process. So thank you for that. Um, My gentle nudge would be the same. Take a baseline about where you are and where you'd like to be, and then jump in. Go there. Why not? My gentle nudge is to get more sleep. Yeah. Oh, because it definitely helps in all the areas. And yeah. with brain fog. And with brain fog. Because mm-hmm. those that think that next week's the book might need to have some more sleep. Yeah. yeah so um, not that we're oh. calling anybody out, <laughs> Jill Burkett. <laughs> <Nope>. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great week, Thank everyone. Thank you. Thanks week. for coming. Bye. Thanks again, Dr. Welsh. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs>